10. The Mackenzie Valley Wolf Among the world of canids, which includes wolves and dogs and other dog-like creatures, many people agree that there is no wolf more impressive than the legendary Grey Wolf. But what a lot of people don't know is that when talking about gray wolves, people are actually talking about many different animals. It's true that the gray wolf is the largest type of wolf in the world, but there are literally dozens of subspecies. The five largest wolf subspecies are all gray wolves, including the biggest of them all, the Mackenzie Valley Wolf. This wolf is the leader of the pack known scientifically as Canis lupus octodentalis. It gets its common name from the Mackenzie River Valley in Canada, where these massive beasts roam free and where they are most frequently spotted. The average Mackenzie Valley wolf can weigh around 175 pounds, or 80 kilograms, making it by far the heaviest and heavier than most humans. They have stronger limbs, they have bigger lungs, and they have a seriously powerful bite. Despite being the largest, the Mackenzie Valley Wolf is exceptionally rare to see. Only around 10,000 of them have ever been recorded in the wild. They have smaller packs than other types of gray wolves and live throughout the vast and unpopulated regions of Canada and Alaska. Number 9. Great Plains Wolf Moving south from the home of the Mackenzie Valley Wolf, we have the Great Plains Wolves, which are quite a bit smaller at only 110 pounds or 50 kilograms and between four and a half and six and a half feet, one and a half to two meters in length. Still, these are ferocious pack animals. They roam throughout the United States and the southern regions of Canada, primarily near the Great Lakes. They have packs of between five and six wolves, with the dominant male and female in charge of the entire pack. But believe it or not, we nearly lost the Great Plains wolf altogether. In the 1930s, the Great Plains wolves were nearly extinct in the western United States. It wasn't until 1974 that they became a protected species on the endangered list. Luckily, just four years later, their numbers started to rebound, and by 2007, they were removed from the endangered species list. There are now estimated to be over 4,000 of these animals scattered throughout the U.S. As is typical of other wolves, the Great Plains wolf has fantastic hearing, sight, and smell, and they travel on average at 5 miles per hour, or 8 kilometers per hour, for as many as 10 hours a day, covering upwards of 40 miles or 60 kilometers on a single hunt. You're highly unlikely to ever witness a Great Plains wolf in the wild, even if you live in the same area as a pack. They simply aren't interested in crossing paths with most humans, and they tend to stay far away from us. That's for the best, as an encounter between an unarmed human and a pack of these animals would end very badly for the poor human. Number 8. Yuki the Wolf Dog By far one of the coolest wolves around today is actually a wolf dog. A wolf dog is a cross between a dog and a wolf essentially tying together two threads of the family tree that separated thousands of years ago, when domesticated dogs split from wolves. With that in mind, meet Yuki. This huge, adorable, and wildly friendly wolf dog had DNA that tested as 87.5% gray wolf, 8.6% Siberian husky, and 3.9% German shepherd. He was as close to a wolf as a wolf dog can be, and he had an incredible story like you wouldn't believe. Yuki was rescued from a horrible situation. Someone had purchased this sweet wolf pup from a breeder, then abandoned him at just eight months old when he became too much to handle. Luckily, the good people at the Shy Wolf Sanctuary took Yuki in, and he became a beloved member of the family. He weighed around 120 pounds, or 55 kilograms, and played a critical role in raising awareness about the plight of abandoned dogs, gaining international fame in 2018, when his photos went viral for his resemblance to the dire wolves from Game of Thrones. Ultimately, Yuki passed away in 2020 at the ripe old age of 13. He died in his sleep while inside his enclosure, according to the Shy Wolf Sanctuary. But considering this huge wolf dog started life as an abandoned puppy and died an international celebrity, he had a pretty good life. Have you ever seen a wolf dog? What do you think of them? Do you want one? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to Taltanic if you haven't already. We have more videos like this coming soon. Number 7. Eurasian Wolf The Eurasian wolf, just like the Mackenzie Valley wolf, is one of the largest species in the world. According to Active Wild, 
It's one of 37 recognized subspecies of gray wolf. It's also the largest type of wolf found outside of the American continents. This proud and vicious animal once roamed all throughout Europe, but with the rise of cities and civilization, they have been forced into hiding. There are now only a few isolated groups, primarily in Scandinavia, Poland, and Romania, as well as around 30,000 of them roaming the sparse wilderness of Russia. But how do you tell a Eurasian wolf apart? Well, these huge predators have grayish-brown coats and light gray hair on their bellies. Oh, yeah, and they are monstrously huge. The maximum a Eurasian wolf can weigh is between 150 and 175 pounds. That's 70 to 80 kilograms. And finally, they have remarkable howls. The Eurasian wolf howls longer and louder than their American counterparts, able to raise every last hair on the back of your neck. Number six, man and wolf. You may think that dogs are a man's best friend, but what about wolves? If you asked the Russian man who recently posted a video of him and his best friend, who happens to be an utterly enormous black Canadian wolf, what he thought about the old proverb, he would probably tell you it's nonsense. But then again, he's friends with an unbelievable giant wolf. It's so large that it could easily take a bite out of his head without breaking a sweat. And yet, the two play together, like the wolf were nothing but an ordinary golden retriever. The wolf's name is Akella and it's unclear how exactly the man and his wolf became friends. But the pair seem to get along well enough, as hard as that is to believe. Still, despite their seemingly friendly relationship, there is always the chance that the wolf could snap at any minute and bite off the man's leg. This is one of those precarious situations that comes with befriending a wild animal. Number five, Tundra Wolf. The Alaskan Tundra Wolf is arguably the most gorgeous wolf in the world. No, it's not the biggest, but yes, it is hard to believe that such a beautiful creature is still roaming freely through the United States. This stunning creature lives primarily in Alaska and near the Arctic tundra region. It's closely related to the Great Plains wolf, similar in skull size, tooth morphology, and weight. But what sets the tundra wolf apart from others is its fantastic coat of white fur. The tundra wolf is as white as an arctic fox, only way, way larger. It likely developed its white fur in the same way the polar bear did, by beating out the animals in the arctic region that had darker fur by blending into the snow better, and thereby surviving and passing down the genes that give it white hair. This is why the snowier the region is, the whiter the animals are. It's all about blending in and surviving. For us humans, though, it makes those animals look unique and special, with exceptional beauty. Number four, gigantic killer wolf. Our next wolf is nearly too monstrous to believe. According to a recent report from The Sun, there was a gigantic wolf terrorizing a village in the south of Russia. The local reports claimed that this huge beast caused a massive amount of chaos, ravaging over 20 cows, sheep, and horses in just a single month. Either this huge wolf hated livestock or had an insatiable hunger. But whatever the reason, the wolf was on a bloodthirsty rampage and went on killing until one night when it was spotted in the community graveyard. A hunter then tracked and shot the beast before hauling it back to town, where he was praised as a hero by the frightened locals who feared for the lives of their children. Believe it or not, this is actually a significant fear in rural Russia killer wolves. They even used helicopters to track and kill the animals, despite animal rights activists trying to put an end to the senseless violence. Because of course, not all wolves are giant beasts that ravage horses and cattle. And besides, maybe the farmer should do a better job of locking up their animals. Wolves are only doing what they need to survive. Well, most of them anyway. Number three, the largest wolf pack. In the winter of 2010, a Russian town was apparently terrorized by a giant super pack of wolves that numbered in the 400s. This is absolutely insane, considering most wolf packs are less than 10. The small town of Verkoyansk only had a population of 1,300, leaving them dangerously vulnerable to such a large pack of rampaging wolves. The animals apparently killed at least 30 horses in only four days on their mad feeding frenzy. It took a full team of hunters to regain control over the town, patrolling its neighborhoods day and night and shooting any wolves on sight. But even though this is an official record for the largest wolf pack in the Guinness World Records, some animal experts are suspicious. The maximum any wolf pack ever gets is 15, and so the reports of 400? 
seem downright outrageous. But if the harsh winter really did kill off most of their usual prey, different packs may have converged on the Russian town in an attempt to feed. Number 2. Dire Wolf there is no animal that wolf lovers love discussing more than the legendary dire wolf. First of all, no, these are not fictional animals from a fantasy book. Dire wolves were indeed real, and they were indeed huge. They were more muscular than the gray wolves we have today. They were heavier by about 25% weighing upwards of 175 pounds, or 80 kilograms. They also had broader bones and a more powerful bite. By analyzing skeletal remains from these huge wolves, scientists were able to determine that they could bite with 129% the force of wolves living today. However, out of all things, their legs were quite a bit smaller. The dire wolf was a stocky animal, and likely much slower than many common wolves. At this point, you're probably wondering what such large and ancient animals ate. Well, apparently they liked horses. Scientists discovered that dire wolves had a primary diet of horses, but sometimes ate mastodons, prehistoric camels, and even giant ground sloths. Number 1. Rescue Wolf Last on the list for today is a wolf story to warm the heart. Workers in the European country of Estonia were shocked when they spotted what they assumed was a large dog trapped inside an icy river while working at the local dam. The workers quickly cleared the ice, rescued the pup, and got it to the clinic for care. It wasn't until they arrived at the clinic and the veterinarians got a look at their dog that it was no dog at all, but actually a huge and very cold wolf. According to the report from the BBC, the wolf had low blood pressure, which was probably why it let the men handle it the way they did. It turned out to be a young male wolf, only a year old. It still had a lot of growing to do. The nice people at the clinic treated the unnamed wolf until it was healthy again, at which time it became a whole lot less friendly, and then released it back into the wild. Have you ever seen a wolf in the wild? Let me know your stories in the comments. Number 10. The Triceratops Skull An amazing Triceratops skull was recently excavated in South Dakota. It's 7 feet or 2.1 meters long, and it weighs a whopping 3,000 pounds. That's 1,361 kilograms. The fossil is, without a doubt, one of the coolest dinosaur discoveries ever made in the Badlands of South Dakota. David Schmidt, with the Westminster College in Fulton, led the group in the excavation, a group that usually only finds small fragments of dinosaur bones. They couldn't believe it when they dug up an entire Triceratops skull, which apparently dates back 66 million years. The skull has been dubbed Shady, and may be part of a larger skeleton buried just nearby. The team was able to transport the fossil using a flatbed truck to a secure location, where it's currently waiting for enough funding to be properly restored. As of now, there's no information on how the Triceratops died or anything of the sort, but hopefully more digs in the near future will reveal additional information about the life of this legendary dino. Number 9. Woolly Mammoth Skeleton Speaking of amazing skeletons, the remains of a woolly mammoth were recently pulled out of a shallow lake in Russia's Arctic. Russian scientists are now examining the preserved bones of the adult mammoth that once roamed the earth about 10,000 years ago. It was discovered completely by accident by local residents. They found part of its skull, some foreleg bones, and even a collection of ribs. But this has come as no surprise, as the Siberian region has been the epicenter for prehistoric animal bones in recent years. As the climate changes and the ground thaws and releases ancient bones from the permafrost. The researchers aren't clear right now how the mammoth died, but it's still a great new discovery to add to other recent finds, like the 18,000 year old puppy found in Russia's Far East, and the 30,000 year old mammoth fossils discovered in the same region. Number 8. The Bronze Age Cyborg Treasure hunters operating in Switzerland recently uncovered the hand of what some are calling a Bronze Age Cyborg. The hand in question is about 3,500 years old. It's made completely of bronze, and it has a gold cuff around the bottom. 
the archaeologists that discovered it are saying it's the oldest metal sculpture of a human body part ever found in Europe. But what's really strange is that researchers discovered a hollow pocket at the bottom of the hand, which suggests that it may have been mounted to another object. It could have been mounted to a scepter and used during complex rituals, or it could have been fitted to an amputee, serving as one of the earliest prosthetics in human history. The discovery was made by treasure hunters while combing the shores near Lake Beale with metal detectors. The hand was found alongside a bronze dagger and a rib bone, but nobody is entirely sure what all these pieces mean. Scientists were able to do radiocarbon dating on the glue still attached to the gold foil, revealing the hand was probably built in 1500 BC. But this discovery gets even more mysterious. After the hand was discovered, the archaeologists went back to the site later to see what else they could find. They ended up uncovering an ancient grave that likely belonged to the owner of the bronze hand. The grave had been built over top an even older structure, which means the mysterious Bronze Age part may have been used to cover up whatever the structure had been. This is one of the newest and most fascinating archaeological mysteries out there, and it has still yet to be solved. What do you think the actual purpose of this bizarre bronze hand was? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 7. Iron Age Settlement An unexpected Iron Age settlement, complete with a Roman villa, was literally just discovered in Oxfordshire in the United Kingdom. A team of archaeologists working with dig ventures uncovered the unmistakable outlines of at least 15 roundhouses that had been constructed between 400 and 100 BC. Near these houses, the archaeologists also found hollow remains of a Roman villa that had been built over top of some of the Iron Age structures, with the villa dating to much later in the 4th century AD. Of course, there weren't actually any ruins discovered. What the team found were the remains of the structures. They found post holes, huge trenches where foundations had once stood, and even the gullies of a drainage system. The archaeologists also found ceramic storage jars for food and other commonplace artifacts. It's currently believed that the people who lived in the ancient roundhouses were farmers toiling on the land. Nobody is sure where they went or why they abandoned their settlement, but researchers are excited to find out. Number 6. Thousands of Tombs In 2021, thousands of tombs were revealed in Xi'an, the same archaeological site in China that is home to the legendary Terracotta Army, crafted in the 3rd century to protect the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Hong, during his arduous journey into the afterlife. But the discovery of these tombs are brand new. 3,500 previously unseen tombs are currently being excavated, all thanks to a new pair of metro lines being put in to connect the city with the airport. The tombs were found buried underground by construction workers, and now it's a mad dash to collect as many artifacts as possible before the modern construction goes ahead and destroys the historical remains. Unfortunately, we know basically nothing about who was entombed here. The South China Morning Post reported the discovery in late February, saying that archaeologists were currently working overtime to dig up the relics during the Lunar New Year. But there is literally no information on what other relics were found other than the tombs. We also don't know if there were any mummified remains. Researchers are being extremely stingy on information, so we might have to wait a few more weeks until researchers begin giving us the goods. But considering that Xi'an was the capital city of China for 1100 years, archaeology enthusiasts are in for a big treat. Number 5. The Lions of London A new archaeological discovery in the city of London has revealed that lions and hippos once roamed the English capital. Apparently, London was home to exotic elephants and big cats, though this was quite a long time ago. To give you a bit of history, London has been settled for about 2,000 years, ever since it was originally founded under the name Londinium by the Romans. And while London may only be 2,000 years old, it's generally agreed by experts that Britain itself has been occupied by humans for 30,000 years. 
But, according to a recent report from the Daily Mail, footprints were discovered near Norfolk in England that have been dated back to between 800,000 and 900,000 years ago, meaning human, or human-like, life existed on the British Isle far before we had invented language or mastered fire. But, as for the hippos and lions, the bones of these ancient animals have been found throughout several different excavations in London, and even under Trafalgar Square, dating back to around 125,000 years ago. And now, thanks to a fascinating climate history stitched together by the Natural History Museum, showing when England was extremely hot before the last ice age, we know that there must have been a huge and almost incomprehensible history on the British Isle, going back further than we can imagine. There are no hippos swimming through the River Times now, but there definitely were. Number 4. Ancient Kangaroo Painting The oldest ever kangaroo painting in Australia has just been found, and it dates back 17,300 years. It was found in the Kimberley region of Western Australia, a part of the country that is not hugely settled and is populated with large mountain ranges and deep canyons. It's also home to thousands of amazing rock paintings left behind by the original indigenous people of the country. Professor Damien Finch with the University of Melbourne managed to date the fascinating kangaroo painting by using the radiocarbon signal from an ancient wasp nest found near the artwork. It was quite an ingenious way of figuring out how old the painting is, and now we know it's the oldest painted kangaroo in the world. But it was not alone. The researchers also discovered a handful of other strange, almost unidentifiable pictures. They found paintings of what appears to be a kangaroo mixed with a lizard, and they even discovered a painting of a snake nearly 4 feet or 1.2 meters in length. Thanks to these newest discoveries, it's now clear that those who lived in the region between 17,000 and 13,000 years ago were experimenting with a naturalistic style of painting. Number 3. Ancient Viking Sword It's time to look at some very cool weaponry. An old Viking sword was discovered on the side of a Norwegian mountain, and researchers were finally able to deduce that it's 1,200 years old. The sword was actually stumbled upon by reindeer hunters in Norway while looking for game at high altitude. The sword was just kind of laying in and amongst the rocks, and it had been sitting there probably since 850 to 950 AD. The blade of the sword was definitely rusted, any organic material like leather straps or wood adornments had long since disintegrated, but otherwise, the sword was extremely well preserved. The cold temperature and low pressure from the altitude prevented the blade itself from rusting and degrading too much. Of course, nobody knows exactly who this ancient blade belonged to or why it was left on the side of a mountain. Researchers are fairly certain that it belonged to a Viking swordsman, but that's really just an educated guess. One theory is that the sword was probably forgotten during a harsh blizzard, covered over in permafrost, and only revealed recently because of climate change and melting ice. And though we'll probably never know why exactly it was abandoned where it was, the discovery gives a fascinating glimpse into the past. Number 2. Massive Anglo-Saxon Cemetery An Anglo-Saxon cemetery of enormous proportions has just been unearthed and it is giving researchers a unique look into the life of those who lived in ancient England. This happened in the small village of Overston, and according to the Vintage News, it is the biggest discovery of its kind in England. At least 154 Anglo-Saxon burials were inspected during an operation that lasted over a year, but amongst the bones were also 3,000 artifacts that probably belonged to the deceased who had been trying to take their belongings with them into the next life. There were wrist clasps, rings, brooches, and at least 2,000 individual beads that could have been part of necklaces or other ancient accessories. Researchers have found cosmetic kits, as if the dead planned to freshen up a bit before stepping into the afterlife. But of course, there is a much darker side to this discovery. The archaeologists also uncovered blades, spears, and shields 
indicating that the people were warriors in one sense or another. The burial ground dates back to the Bronze Age, and right next to it is a spectacular settlement from the same era, with at least 22 buildings spanning 4,000 years of complex history. Number 1. The Roman Chariot An amazing Roman chariot was discovered at the end of February 2021 near the ancient ruins of Pompeii. Archaeologists are calling it a discovery with no parallel. This means it's a pretty big deal. The chariot was discovered almost fully intact, near to where three horses were discovered back in 2008, one of them still inside of its harness. It's doubtful that the horses were pulling the chariot when Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD and buried the town in ash and killed up to 15,000 people, but the two discoveries are definitely connected. They were found inside the same stable. What's truly amazing about the Roman chariot is that it still has its wheels, its iron components, its brawn and tin decor, and the imprints of the wood that had been used in its construction. Archaeologists even found the imprints of ropes, which is something that almost never, ever happens. The discovery itself came about because of a program designed to fight illegal looting in the area, with looters digging tunnels to find previously undiscovered artifacts to sell them on the black market. Hopefully, more excavating in the coming weeks will reveal even more fascinating leftovers from Italy's Pompeii. Thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on these incredible discoveries? Number 10. Frankenstein Dog Not all terrifying monsters come from the depths of the ocean. Some are man-made. Take the monstrous two-headed dog created by a Soviet scientist named Vladimir Dimikov. This guy was a legit mad scientist who practiced some seriously radical experiments during the 1950s. While he definitely made some headway in medicine, among other things, one of his most abhorrent creations was an absolute monster. After having transplanted a number of vital organs between canines, his favorite experimental subjects, he aimed, despite so much controversy of the idea, to see if he could take things further with his next experiment. He wanted to graft the head of one dog onto the body of another, fully intact dog. He really tried to stitch one dog onto another, and the results were horrifying. It all started in 1954. There were 23 similar surgeries done, all of which weren't that successful. It wasn't until the 24th surgery in 1959 that he finally got the dog to kind of work the way he envisioned it to. Thanks to the experience of Dimikov and his team, the operation took only three and a half hours. Once the two-headed dog was resuscitated, both heads could see, smell, hear, and swallow. Of course, this is mad science and completely insane and cruel to animals. So it's no surprise that the monster dog only lived for four days. This is perhaps the closest any mad scientist has ever come to recreating Frankenstein's monster. And hopefully, nobody ever tries it again. I mean, what would the purpose of that even be, really? Number 9. The Elmendorf Beast The Elmendorf Beast is a terrifying monster of rather tiny proportions. It was discovered in 2004 in Elmendorf, Texas, after being shot by a local rancher. It was springtime when experienced and cultured poultry farmer Devin McNally began to lose his chickens to a predator he was never able to see. Whatever it was seemed to be killing his animals in a sinister, vampire-like fashion, literally slaughtering his chickens and drinking their blood, but not eating the meat of the bird. Shortly thereafter, McNally began to detect a bizarre, bluish creature sneakily wandering onto his property and figured it must have been the one behind the attacks. One morning, he waited for the varmint with his rifle ready, and when it tried to sneak into the chicken coop, he shot it. All we know about this freakish creature is that it looked kind of like a dog, but was completely hairless and had unusually blue skin. The monster weighed about 13 pounds, or 5.8 kilograms. It looked like a mutant dog from hell. Experts in the San Antonio Zoo claimed that it could have been a stray Mexican hairless dog. However, some claimed it was a coyote, and other people who may or may not have been professionals said it was the chupacabra. 
to this day, nobody knows for sure. DNA was gathered from the animal, but it proved inconclusive, allegedly because of environmental degradation. The only thing that DNA could tell experts was that the creature came from the canine family. But if it wasn't a coyote, and it wasn't a dog, just what kind of monster canine was it? Do you believe in chupacabras? Number 8. Mysterious Giant Believe it or not, but a mysterious giant has been spotted in Mexico. Residents of a small community were recently given the shock of a lifetime when some eyewitnesses saw a lumbering beast that they associated either with Bigfoot or with a giant alien. This happened on a rural piece of farmland near the small city of Ciudad Valles. While spending the afternoon with her husband and their child, an unnamed witness took a picture of the supposed giant. Apparently, the group heard a sound like an explosion, and yet, when they looked in the direction of the sound, they didn't see flames, but instead saw what looked like a giant man, though extremely slim, with ridiculously long limbs. Yes, this story is super bizarre, and the photograph is a bit blurry. But who knows what kinds of things are going on in the rural parts of our world? Was it a giant? Maybe. Was it an alien? Also maybe. You're gonna have to decide what you believe for yourself. Number 7. Sea Monster from the Deep A horrifying monster with razor-sharp teeth and no eyes recently terrorized the internet when an image of its alien body was posted on Reddit. The fish was allegedly captured in a lake outside of the bustling city of Kunming by some Chinese villagers. None of the fishermen knew exactly what kind of monster they had caught, though some people described it as the offspring of an eel and demon. It didn't look like any fish normally found in the lake, or even any fish normally found in the natural world. It was a true monster of the deep, with a long and slithery body and a gaping mouth. It's unclear exactly what happened to the monster after it was caught, but hopefully it was thrown back into the water. As best as we could determine, the fish may have been a bearded worm goby, which is a type of creature that lives in rivers and other coastal waters, burrowing in the mud and digging tunnels. Of course, the bearded worm goby has no eyes, since it spends most of its time in complete darkness under the ground, just like a slimy worm. Number 6. The Jersey Devil One of the most terrifying monsters that could very well be real is the Jersey Devil. This monster came about in the 1700s when Jane Leeds discovered she was pregnant with her 13th baby and cursed the baby to become a devil. There are actually a few different versions of how the Jersey Devil came to be, but this is definitely the most popular. When the woman's confounded child was born, it had wings, hooves, and even a tail. The beast flew out of the chimney and has been haunting New Jersey ever since. Whether you believe in the Jersey Devil or not, it's still a pretty terrifying monster if you think about it. A cursed demon baby? No thank you. Apparently, it's also been spotted at least 13 fairly legitimate times in the Garden State. It frightened people back in 1812 when Napoleon Bonaparte's older brother claimed to have seen the monster while hunting near his rural estate. Since then, there have been many other eyewitness testimonies that have come forward. There were even 1,000 reports in January of 1909 alone. One of the most convincing cases comes from a Navy commander, who apparently saw the creature and then shot at it with a cannonball. At this time, tracks were found in the field where the devil had been seen, but the commander's bloodhounds refused to follow the tracks, and nobody could find the body of the Jersey Devil. To this day, many people in New Jersey and neighboring states are convinced that this terrifying monster is really out there. Number 5. Monster Sea Lizard When we talk about monsters, the truth is that most of the biggest monsters that ever roamed the Earth died millions of years ago. For example, let's take a look at the terrifying sea lizard that lived off the coast of Africa about 66 million years before today. This was a legitimate sea monster with teeth so big and so sharp that it was able to slice fish in half with a single bite. And I'm not talking about small fish either. This was a giant sea lizard from the time of the dinosaurs known properly as a mosasaur, and researchers just recently discovered its fossilized remains. 
We've known about mosasaurs for a long time, but these new fossils give a whole new definition to sea creatures. It also revealed some interesting information for paleontologists, suggesting that the diversity of giant sea lizards peaked directly before the asteroid hit the Earth and wiped them out. The newest remains of the mosasaur were discovered near Morocco, and was likely the size of a giant porpoise, but with the kind of teeth it had, it very well still could have attacked whales and sliced them up. Number 4. The Beast of Tenby The Beast of Tenby is another one of those strange creatures that washed up on a beach in Wales and really freaked everyone out. According to the Huffington Post, nobody was entirely sure what kind of monster it was. The corpse still had some hair on it, and it almost looked like a weird demon bear or even a bloated mutant pig. And maybe, most surprising of all, was that the local resident who initially found it while walking his dog claimed that it didn't even smell bad. This is odd, because, you know, dead things tend to give off a pretty horrible odor. Unfortunately, the mysterious creature was never properly identified. Some claimed that, because of its five toes, it was probably a badger or a dog that had spent too much time in the ocean. Others insisted that the Beast of Tenby was a type of alien monster with claws, a beak, and the beady eyes of an extraterrestrial. Number 3. Sea Monster vs. Crew Naval folklore tells the terrifying story of a German U-boat that sank beneath the waves after being attacked by some giant vicious sea creature. According to War History Online, Scottish engineers recently discovered the remnants of the submarine lying underneath a deep-sea power line. Experts claim it's the same UB-85 that, according to its own crew, was attacked and sunk by a monster from the sea. Of course, most mainstream historians don't believe the story. They say it's nothing but paranoid gibberish. But there's no denying that in 1918, a British warship called the HMS Coriopsis captured the crew of the sunken German sub, only to have them tell a story about an enormous monster with horns, huge eyes, and row upon row of teeth. The mass of the creature apparently caused their ship to tilt over when it climbed aboard. The monster then attacked the forward gun and bit and tore chunks right out of it. This eventually caused the crew to abandon ship and surrender to the British. Unfortunately, even though the submarine has likely been spotted on the seabed, nobody had gone down there to check it out. We don't know if there are really teeth marks in the metal from a monster attack until someone is able to bring parts of the U-boat back up to the surface for inspection. Number 2. Monster in the Lake When people think about Canada, they probably think about hockey and skiing and how nice everyone is. What most people don't know is that there is a giant serpent believed to be living in the Okanagan Lake. The creature is known as the Ogopogo, and sightings of it go all the way back to 1872, which, by the way, is about 50 years before the Loch Ness Monster became famous. And just like the Loch Ness Monster, the Ogopogo is believed to be a huge and terrifying sea serpent with many humps on its back. The Ogopogo is part of the local native mythology, as the original indigenous people of the area referred to it as the Naitaka, which was an evil entity that had extreme power and malicious intent. What's really cool about this is that Bigfoot is also part of many indigenous mythology, and they typically only spoke of real animals. This has led a lot of people to speculate that giant monsters like the Ogopogo and the Sasquatch were witnessed and known about by the indigenous people. But today, they have retreated into the wilderness. As for the Ogopogo, it's never been officially found even after an in-depth investigation in 1991. And there may have been sightings just as recently as 2018. Number 1. The Lizard Man Lake monsters are scary, but there's nothing quite more terrifying than an actual lizard man. This monster lives in the woods around Bishopville in South Carolina. Sightings of the Lizard Man began back in 1988, when a young man stopped to change a flat tire in the middle of the night outside of Scape or Swamp. He reported hearing noises in the forest, and then turned to see a monster man, at least seven feet tall, with scales like a lizard all over his body. 
The creature allegedly attacked his car, leaving scratch marks on the roof and damaging the side mirror. After that, the legend heated up. One of the last encounters was in 2011, when a couple had their car attacked overnight and found teeth marks and saliva all over their vehicle. But now, a new sighting is bringing back the legend of the Lizard Man. A woman named Sarah was exiting church on a Sunday morning when she saw what appeared to be the Lizard Man running through the trees. She took a quick picture with her phone, but of course it turned out pretty blurry. Still, you can definitely make out the silhouette of the possible Lizard Man in the background. If there really is a reptilian humanoid wandering through South Carolina, everyone should definitely be a little scared. After all, if there's one lizard man, chances are there's an entire colony of lizard people, and they may very well be living underground or in the swamps. Thanks for watching. Have you ever seen a monster yourself? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for more videos like these.